Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day eight of the Leco August Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, let me know what you think about today's farm. And yes, I do have a shirt on. <laughs> like, uh, 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 I don't know. Right, let's take a look at today's farm. Uh, I went, um, uh, Meldon training is just so tiring. I took a nap a little bit earlier uh, and I just passed out and I forced myself to wake up just to eat. Uh, you know, get all the food to eat. Otherwise, everything will be closed. So I'm just so tired because I want to go back to that nap. But, uh, and I didn't even do that much. Uh, I just went seven miles, uh, five miles at hopefully marathon pace. It's maybe a little bit faster than my marathon pace, but it is one that, um, I don't know, maybe I'm training for. We'll see if I'm fit enough to um, have to readjust after a couple of, uh, couple of weeks. But, so I'm really tired. So I'm going to be tired, for, honestly, for the next like three months. So my apologies for these videos in, in advance, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, today we have 808 soup servings. You have two soups, A and B, each with starting with uh, N milliliter. On every turn, one of the following four serving operations is chosen at random, each with probability 0.25% independent of all previous runs. Okay, so you pull... Do, 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 do. Okay, I don't quite know what that means yet, but let, let's take a look. There are no operations that takes 0 and 100 from B. Okay, I mean, it's nice for them to point out because you it's very easy to assume symmetry. The amount of A and B are poured simultaneously. If an operation asks you to pour more than you have left of a soup, pour all that remains. Process stops immediately after any turn in which one of the soups is used up. Return the probability that A is used uh, before B, plus half the probability that both soups... Uh, that's kind of a weird expected why you think, but... I, I mean, I... Okay, I mean, either way. Answers within 10 to the 5th are, are actually accepted. Okay. Uh, and actually goes, wow. Huh. And actually goes pretty big, huh? I was good. My my first instinct, to be frank, is that, and this is a medium, so maybe uh, that's a hmm. My first instinct is dynamic programming. Honestly, um, you know, you, you have, yeah, you have n milliliters for a, you have n milliliters for b, and you just kind of do DP it, right? Like, you you run it. There are four instances. Um, you do it one for each, and then you know just keep going, right? But of course, that is not gonna work out. Because, well, ten, n is too big. But for this problem, there is an asymmetry, right? Well, and of course there is, because if there isn't, then it would just be 50-50 the entire time. And I feel like I've seen lead code or maybe code force of like trick silly problems like that. But in any case, it doesn't seem like this is the case. That said, um, it does seem like, I mean, it really only goes one or two directions, right? So, you know, so this is not surprising. But what I was going to say, or what I mean to say, is that the output um, seems like as we converge, uh, I mean, sorry, as n gets bigger, the output probably converges to 1, because well, you, you can't go higher than 1. So, I think what I'm going to do is still do dynamic programming, but cheat. Uh, and what I mean by that is that I assume, and you know, there's a, where is that? 10 to the fifth uh, of the actual answer. So maybe we have to do some math of like, you know, like at some n, at some n, um, the probability of A happening before B plus whatever half of the other thing, it's going to be like 90.9999, five nines after that, uh, well, actually, well, I was going to say percentage, so it's actually less than that, right? It's only 99.999 plus some epsilon uh, percentage, right? Um, and, I don't know, maybe the answer is like 1,000 or 2,000 or, I don't know, 10,000, right? And that would still be okay. And keeping in mind that, of course, uh, all this is an increment of 4, so we get immediately divided by 4 just to kind of make it easier for the math for us, even though, depending on how you write your dynamic programming, it might not matter. Um, yeah, I think that's basically the way I would start. So, okay. And first, let's write a naive dynamic programming to kind of see what we're getting into. Um, th there are functions in which it's non, um, non, uh, it it's strict, or it's just like, you know, it goes up and down, right? But 
I was gonna say non incremental. That's not right. Uh, non monotonic, maybe right. Uh, in the sense that it goes up and down and up and down, and you can't do what I'm doing here, right? But this one, um, and and you, I can prove this quite well, but you can kind of do a variation of this. Uh, I mean, you could do your know, proof here. It's not that hard, to be frank. But you, because you could probably do like a coast approximation. But but one thing that you can do like a, a I don't know, like um, like a sim, similar simple thing is that let's say you put two from A, zero from B, one from A, one from B, and then that's it, right? Uh, just obviously you can't do zero. I mean, you if you have this, it just becomes trivial. So you know. But the, the point here is that let's say you have this at 50% and then you have this at 50%, then that means that you are either going to be minus one on the, or, sorry, minus two even, minus two on the A or just zero on the AB, right? Like A minus B is zero to zero or something like that on the poor. And, but that also means that if these are the all possible options that you have, that means that if you do it once or if, um, Maybe not n is equal to one. Maybe n is equal to one is a little confusing. But maybe like n is equal to two, right? Then you have fifty percent. Or okay, maybe n equals to one. Then uh, okay, there is some like weird math. But let's just ignore the half probability part. I'm trying to like be a physicist uh, in the sense that I'm just making everything as simple as possible to illustrate, right? Um, you know, like assuming the sphere is, or uh, assuming the circle is a perfect sphere or something like that. I don't know. But my point is that n is equal to one. A, a, uh, uh, you have a 50-50% chance, right? Because w you either do this or you tie and maybe you can say that's 75 depending on how they map, right? And is equal to 2? Well, uh, it gets harder, right? Because the only way that they tie is if you do this one twice, m meaning that 75% it's going to be N equals, or uh, A is going to win. N equals to 3, the only way th this remains tied, and B cannot win, right? The only way this re remains tied is that... Um, it's um, 2 to the 3 and then subtract 1 from it, right? So it's like 87.5, right? But you can see that, like, you know, just like directionally, these things will converge to 1 and th there's no possibility. It doesn't really make sense intuitively, even without, like, a strict mathematical proof for B to catch up. Um, you know, probabilistically, right, in terms of all the, how the math expected value works. In any case... Yeah, so we can maybe just write it out. Uh, and for, for today, I'm not going to go with dynamic programming. Um, I feel like I have a lot of videos on dynamic programming. Um, I don't know. I guess recently I haven't been really focused on dynamic programming, uh, uh, beginners, things. But so I'm just going to use... To, uh, when I'm, when, why I say it that way is that um, in the past, I often do like a variation uh, on teaching dynamic programming, but... I don't know. Let me know in the comments how valuable you think it is because I feel like I've said the same thing like so many videos. So so now I'm just using uh, um, in in uh, in Python, cache allows us to do a memorization of the function, which is strictly speaking not dynamic programming. But if you have a problem, uh, a function that has a lot of overlapping sub problems, then you could say it's dynamic programming, right? In any case, so yeah, so then now you have like, the, and this is pretty basic. I don't even know how to uh, maybe like get P or something. The names are silly. Uh, that's why I always just use the word go. But yeah, maybe like you have a, a you know, A and B. Maybe it's just so, as simple as that, right? So if A is uh, less than or equal to zero and B is less than or equal to zero, then we just return, uh, return half the probability, right? Uh, otherwise, if A is less, da, 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 we return 1.0 uh, because at this point that that's a hundred percent chance, and it be that A beats B, right? Just to be clear, um, gets uh, probability that A is poured out before B, right? I mean, and this like you know this weird function, but sure, right? I just in English, roughly speaking, that's how I would say it. Um, and then there's only three possibilities, so we can, in dynamic or uh, in memorization, we can just brute force it in a way, because it is, you know, strict, uh, straightforward. And then it is just, uh, yeah. And then it is get, so then now mm, we want to return, um, yeah, we could say return uh, one fourth 
times, or maybe you even write divided by four because four divided by four can be represented exactly in binary, right? It's just a right shift twice, <laughs> right? So then you have like basically get p of a minus four b, right? And here I just want to be clear, like I said, we would divide by by four, right? Um, no. Actually, I guess th this is quite. Um, I mean, they use examples that are actually fifty is not divisible by four, but uh, so I have to be a little bit careful. So I, I'm a little bit lazy here. How do I? What is this again? Um, oh, why did I divide it by four? That's not even. That doesn't even make sense. But I meant twenty five. Sorry, I divided by twenty five so that everything is in increments of four. Wow, man, I am sloppy. But we all we, we still need to kind of uh you know like what what if the answer is sixty right then you know so I can't just write this per se I mean maybe we can but I have to think about it a little bit right for example if you have sixty that gives you one extra move so sixty is the equivalent in terms of moves as seventy five right so that means that we want to round up so that means that we can just write something like n plus twenty four uh divided by twenty five right something like that. Um, so that basically gives us the ceiling and round up and so forth. And now we have uh, these four possibilities, right? Yeah, A minus 3, B minus 1. And yeah, and as I write it out, you could clearly see that we have a divided by 4 on all of these, so we can actually just take it out, right? Uh, A minus 1, B minus 3. And then, you know, just take this divided by 4. Oh, no, it's just regular to do it. Uh, and that's it, right? So then now uh, we could try to get P of N over N, or N and N, and give it a spin. Um, oh, and it looks good, right? But the problem is, of course, the, you know, this is, a for now, a straightforward application of dynamic programming, right? But the thing is that we look at the constraints, and it is going to be a little bit sad. Let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. That is the biggest number, right? And you can see, wow. Actually, I didn't expect this. So we might have to kind of consider it a little bit. I thought, because I thought Python on lead code um, had this automatically fixed, or they used to. So I'm typing on the Discord for a second. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, in the video, in this video you're watching, I'm using it as an example. Of course, we knew that it would actually, I honestly thought it would time out before this. Um, but I, huh. I'm actually surprised that it reached max step. Uh, that just means that we have to maybe consider another thing because if A is, I don't know, something like 4,000 or something, then this would recurse like a thousand times, which, you know, which is an issue even if we don't have a million, right? So, um, yeah, well, it's 4,000 times 25, right? Something like that. In any case, eh, that is actually a little bit awkward. Okay, yeah, let's say, what is that, like, even a million, would that give me depth thing? It's either that or I have an actual depth recursion thing. No, I have a memory limit exceeded. Huh. I'm just double checking my, my, my code to make sure that I didn't have an infinity loop typo or infinity state, but it doesn't seem like it. It's a little bit awkward. In any case, you can see that this is already memory limit exceeded, and it is not great. Um, here, there are a couple of things you can do with this. One is, well, write a script outside on your computer or something like that, which presumably you just have better usage. Um, you can also actually rewrite this as bottoms up, right? And then just loop until, uh, yeah, from bottoms up, and then keep going until the, the um, the probabilities are too low. You can also just like play around with this and binary search, right? Uh, and what I mean is that, okay, let's run it for 10,000. What does 10,000 give us? Well, I mean, wow, 
even just like 10,000, uh, the output is almost exactly one, right? So maybe we like already you can just write something like, um, you know, if n is greater than 10,000, return 1.0, right? Uh, and we would be pretty okay, right? I mean, yeah, well, equal to maybe, but it doesn't really matter. And you can probably even like further reduce it by, well, another funny idea, which is binary search. If you really want to, like you could go to 5,000. Now you're between 5,000 and 1,000. Even 5,000 is good, you know? Uh, so then now you go to uh, between 5,000, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Oh, well, this is not one, so just in case that that is what we're looking for, not necessarily the right answer. But uh, yeah, and then you know, you can binary, ooh, your binary search for sure. Um, yeah, and this, I think this is all basically borderline not. So maybe go a little bit higher, right? Uh, I don't know, and you don't have to be super precise with the binary search anyway. But yeah, uh, ooh, okay. We want to go a little bit higher. Right. I mean, with, with actual binary search, uh, you probably can get this much quicker, but uh, I am, you know. Did we always do that one? Yeah, I don't know. Like, if we do the math more precise, whatever, right? Um, yeah. As you can see, there, there are a lot of nines, but maybe I want just a little bit more nines. So, yeah. A, f uh, a few more nines. I don't know. Maybe that's just fine, right? Since it's fine for... Because also... Um, well, one thing which maybe you cannot get from a contest is that you notice this is accepted. Um, that means that they compare the answers and it looks close enough, right? So that means that everything above that is going to be. Uh, actually, I guess we can actually try this, right? I said now, yeah, it returns one and. Hmm. What? That's weird that it output point nine 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 nine. Did I mess this up? Oh, 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 because of this thing. So actually, this math is, well, I am very bad. So actually, it is going to be 4701 divided by 25, so 188. Huh. So 180. Uh, but yeah, but as you can see, even for this one, um, it gives a 1, expected 0.999, and they're close enough for, to get accepted by their machine, which is probably close enough. Uh, here, maybe we'll just add it a little bit more, just to be a little bit fuzzy. And we're very okay, then let's just YOLO submit. Hopefully I don't have a silly wrong answer. And that's it. Uh, DP, memorization, but also uh, just b cutting off the branch, right? Um, yeah, and that's it. That's all I have for this one, really. Uh, what is complexity here, right? Well, th this is going to be, if we look at it this way, then it's going to be at most 200, 200. So 200 square um, you could like, and I had this at one eighty and whatever. You could you could make tighter bounds, right? But I don't know. Query is not even necessary. But yeah, uh, that's it. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Hope this soup for you. I don't know. A Seinfeld reference. Uh, <laughs> stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. I'll see y'all later. And take care. Bye bye.